Hello and welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. And today I'm at the Journeyman Distillery in Michigan. This is a small crafts distillery with a restaurant and a bar on the side. And this may, uh, they make a whiskey since 2010. Um, the Journeyman Distillery takes great, great pride in their grain and looks carefully at the grain, where it comes from and what the grain is. So they only use certified organic and kosher grain and only grain from the region. After be, it, is, it is being milled in the hammer mill, goes through this tube and ends up in the mash tub. The mash tub is currently working and producing one of their four grain whiskies that is made of equal amounts of corn, malted barley, rye and wheat. And this mash tub is special because it can be heated and also can be cooled and now it's currently being cooled so that we have a nice and cool mash that is then later being fermented very good let's have a try it is still pretty warm and it tastes like 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 breakfast cereals or in soup form very sweet because um, the, the enzymes have split, split the starch into sugars now. Mm, very tasty. Let's have a look how it continues. At the fermentation, the mash is entered and then they add the yeast. And what is special here is that the fermenter is cooled with a water uh, coat and kept at a certain temperature to have uh, more, yeah, a better fermentation. And in the end, after five days, we're looking at a distiller's beer at around 10% alcohol. After the beer has been fermented, it enters this pot still here. And what is different to all the other whiskies is that we don't have a sour mash whiskey. This is a sweet mash whiskey. It means that the stillage that is left over after being, it has been distilled, then it is disposed and not entered the cycle of fermentation again. Here the beer is heated through steam pipes and then the alcoholic vapors rise and go through pipes that are behind this, uh, this plate here into the column still. And the column still can be um, adjusted by these levers. If you take a lever up then you open the plate and let the vapor through and if you close it then you have a plate there and there is more separa separation uh, of alcohol and you will receive a higher proof. Um, the alcoholic vapors, vapors rise, go through the line arm, way on the other side and are being condensed inside this metal tube here. And here comes out the finished products and today we are distilling a rye. This here is um, the tails and I'm gonna have a try now. Yeah, there is, tastes a bit funny. And below that is the, is the fine product. And that is much drier, a bit fruitier, and doesn't have the bitterness. I think so. Um, yes. So this is the rye, great product till now. Um, let's see how that, I'm here at the warehouse and now we can see how a craft distillery manages their product. Uh, they paint on every cask their standard label and then they write some stuff on it to remember what they stored. And let's have a look at one of the labels. On top, we have Journeyman Distillery made in Three Oaks that is the name and the location of the distillery. The DSP is uh, the number given from the government that shows, um, uh, that just classifies the distillery. And here we have a product called the Buggy Whip Wheat. It's a wheat whiskey. It was filled 2015 at 60% ABV. And the distillery has a lot of small barrels, but this distillery here also um, filled uh, 25 
standard barrels at 53 gallons. That is not common for craft distilleries because usually you want to have small barrels that age faster and you can bring out your whiskey. So this distillery actually invests into the future. Um, some of the barrels are not standard products, they're experiments, so they can find out what kind of great products they want to do for the future. So, I'm here with Bill Walter, you're the founder of the company, so how did you come to distilling whiskey? Yeah, it's a, it's a long story, but I was fortunate enough to move to Scotland in, in 2000. Spent two years there and, and learned a lot about whiskey while I was living there. I always tell people, for instance, here in Michigan, if there are 140 world-class distilleries right here in the state of Michigan, it just completely changes the way you look at, at a spirit. So living in Scotland, there's over 140 really wonderful world-class distilleries. So while I was living there, I really got uh, a unique perspective. Whiskey in Scotland is part of their soul, it's part of their culture, and I was very fortunate to, to pick up some of that, that history and that heritage while, while okay. living in Scotland. I, and I developed a passion for whiskey while I was there. Okay. So you just started the distillery in 2010 now? Yes. So you already brought out some great whiskeys? Yeah, I started the distillery in 2010. We started distilling. Uh, in, in, in July of 10 and uh, we've, we've gone through this process and we have five different whiskeys here uh, for, for you to look at and okay. uh, maybe we can, we can taste some of them. Okay, yeah, yeah. start with the first one then. Okay, um, well my favorite product, it's really kind of our flagship, is our, our Last Feather Whiskey and that's our rye. And it's actually the product that you tasted off the still a little higher ah, proof. Okay, so great. this would be an opportunity for you to take take a look at it and, and see it in its finished format. You mentioned that uh, the whiskey coming out the still is quite dry and it, it mm -hmm. still is in its barrel aged form. But our rye is really a unique mash bill. It's 60% rye grain and 40% wheat. So we were looking for a mash bill that provided a little bit of spice and pepper with the rye grain, but really nicely balanced off and, and, and sweetened up a little bit with that, that nice uh, balance of, of the wheat grain. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is our last feather rye and you'll, you'll get some nice, uh, nice whiskey notes here. Okay, yeah. The whiskey is at 90 proof, so all of our line here is actually at 90 proof. We wanted to give the consumer the option to dial it back a little bit if they'd like, add mm -hmm. a little water or, or however they drink their whiskey, or they can drink it at 90 proof, which is, which is great too, but it gives the consumer a little flexibility to dial it back if they'd like. Add quite some sweetness in here, almost like, almost like a bit of honey, I would have said. There is, there's a little honey. You're still getting a little spice and a little pepper from that rye grain. Yeah. Like with uh, the finish in the back, I get the spices, but in the beginning, like the front of my tongue is, is filled with honey. So that's cool. A little honey, a little caramel, a little vanilla, a little butterscotch in there. I, uh, I, I didn't get it with the with the smell though. I don't know why, but have it in taste. Great. Thank you. So. Um, why did you call yourself Journeyman Distillery? Good question. Uh, for me, you know, uh, it had a lot to do with the, the idea of traveling. Okay. So I, I lived in Scotland. I uh, had an opportunity to uh, go to a friend's distillery in Tasmania. So I went down there on two different occasions. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, kind of a culmination of my travels kind of led me here to opening the distillery. But also it's this idea in life you really never know where you're going to be from one day to the next. So one day uh, you could be doing one thing, and the next day you're making you're making whiskey. And <laughs> that so was, that life, great. life truly is a journey. Uh, you never know where you're going to be from one day to the next. For instance, you guys are here today in Three Oaks, Michigan, at Journeyman Distillery. You probably never thought you'd ever be here, and yeah. here you are. <laughs> I, I would have met. I've traveled now through through uh, Kentucky, off uh, Tennessee, yeah. and Illinois, now Michigan, and I would have. Or thought that it's a lot different. So, yeah. but I would have imagined 
Kentucky and Tennessee to be just a cornfield. Yeah. But <laughs> it's different. You have a lot of oaks there. You have a lot of trees and a lot They're of... pretty states. Yeah. And yeah. He, up here, I, I knew... I've, I've been here before, but... To Michigan? Um, I'm not sure of Michigan, but like yeah. the area, the yeah, Lake yeah. District, I've been around there, so... I knew what I was, was finding here, but I didn't think that you get a great distillery here. So, yeah. but now you have it. So, um, that was the rye. That was our rye. Yeah, I've heard about the the, the four grain one. The four grain is really great. Uh, that's the mash that you tried. Okay. When, uh, when we were up at the at the mash tank at the beginning of the process, you tried our four different grains. Would you like to try that whiskey? Yeah. Okay. Look, I'll be delighted. Yes. So this is our most complex whiskey. It's got four different grains are rye, wheat, corn, and malted barley. All four grains from, from local family farms here in the Midwest, all kosher, all certified organic. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think this is our very best whiskey. The four different grains really provide a unique flavor profile, each grain telling a little different story in the whiskey. Mm -hmm. I really like the mouthfeel on this whiskey. It's kind of got a nice weight to it. It's got a nice long finish. Um, it's really unique flavor profiles. Each grain telling uh, a little bit of a story there. Yeah, it's great. Feels like cereals in your mouth. Yeah. So. <laughs> but with with a lot of other stuff coming in and out, so it's yeah. like um, I don't know. It's hard to it's, put your finger on the first time you try it. It's like just kind of like a bouquet of different flavor profiles. And I find that each time I drink the Silver Cross whiskey, I identify a little different characteristic to it that maybe I didn't pick up before. Mm -hmm. Just because the four different grains, you know, you're just getting all these interesting flavors. And uh, each time I drink it, I feel like I get a little different flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's very complex. Got a, got a lot, lot of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can almost, I think I've identified the corn and maybe the the rye is is like gives you like the glowing mm -hmm. a little gives spiciness, a little spicy warmth. Warmth, yeah, yeah, that's what that's what the word I was looking yeah. for. So, um, and the wheat gives it kind of like a butteriness, almost kind of a richness or, mm, or a, mm -hmm. a nice uh, almost sweetness to it. And then that maltiness, you know, it's so characteristic in in, uh, in single malts. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of people that, that like scotch and, and like our Silver Cross whiskey. Mm -hmm. Oh, now we get a bit of dryness. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, your buildings here. Yeah. A lot of heritage. Truly. Uh, I've, I've read about it that you had was a, a whip and corset plant. That's right. So this was an old corset and buggy whip factory. You, you okay. can't make these things up. <laughs> we actually have a party that we do every summer. It, uh, we have it on July 4th, which is our Independence Day, but it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's a, a party that where we're celebrating the history of the old building here and the fact okay. that we now make whiskey. So we call the party Corsets, Whips, and Whiskey. <laughs> and, uh, we feel like we really have the uh, essential ingredients of a great party, and uh, that being the whiskey. Uh, okay. The history of the building is really incredible. A guy in the 1800s named E.K. Warren started his business here, and he started with uh, the manufacturing of corsets and buggy whips. <laughs> so he took the quill of a turkey feather, and he made a lightweight, flexible product out of it that he called the Featherbone. So mm -hmm. this is the Featherbone factory building. We named our bourbon after the after the name Featherbone Bourbon. Okay. And this uh, right. Featherbone product was he was able to use it to make buggy whips. This, of course. Before uh, before automobiles, people are going around in their in their horse and buggies. And Probably you had more demand for whips by yes, <laughs> during that then. time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it is not quite the call for it now. But, okay. uh, and he was able to use that same featherbone product to replace the whalebone in women's corsets. So whalebone was very hard, inflexible, and really hard to come by. Oh, and uh, so this featherbone uh, stave is what it was that replaced the whalebone, uh, basically revolutionized the way women's clothing was being made in the 1800s. And so E.K. Warren started his business right here in this building, and but had offices in Chicago, New York, San Francisco, London. He had offices in Germany, 
uh, Paris, and as far as Australia. So this guy literally uh, transformed the way women's clothing was being made in the 1800s. So this is like a rev revolutionary building for yeah. It's got women's a great history. Closing. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, who knows? Maybe someday we'll be uh, be making corsets and buggy whips again here. But right now we're making uh, making distilled spirits, of course. Great. So this is a bourbon whiskey then. Yes, this is our bourbon. You know, traditionally a Kentucky product. Mm -hmm. Most people think actually that you can only make bourbon in Kentucky. But of course, um, that's not true. Bourbon is actually a classification. It's an American product. It can only be made in America. And we're lucky enough here to, to be making a little bit of bourbon right here in, in Michigan. So, so uh, is the mash bill the secret? Or? No, no. Our, our corn um, or our, our bourbon is made from 70% uh, white, uh, white corn that we get from Southern Illinois. Uh, mm -hmm. We use 20% wheat. And we actually use just a dash of, of rye and, and, and malted barley in our bourbon. Uh, the rye and barley gives it a little added complexity, a little depth, a little bit more character, and uh, really kind of adds an extra dimension to the bourbon by using those four, four grains. So this is also a four grain whiskey, uh, but of course being 70% corn, um, it's, it's a bourbon whiskey. It's a bourbon whiskey. That's right. Let's, okay. uh, let's pour a little bit of it. Yeah. So I always like to point out the, the source of our water here. Um, so there's a pump house out front. It's an old 1800s pump house. And the image of it's on the front of our bourbon bottle here. And uh, that's where we get our water. The water in Three Oaks comes up from an aquifer 130 feet under the ground. And uh, the town of Three Oaks is only 1,400 people. So they're not required to treat the water. Uh, so the water that we're getting is just a really pure water source out of this aquifer and uh, it's untreated, there's no chlorine, there's no fluoride, there's no added chemicals to it. So we really feel like we're starting off with a great water source and we wanted to highlight that fact on the front of our bottle. Okay, of our so bottle. you have your organic wheat, organic grains, you yeah. have the water, then I've, I've seen that you don't chill filter. Yeah. So you ha really end up with a natural product. It's truly, yeah, and I think this is the way whiskey uh, was meant to be drank. I think this is how whiskey was made in the old days when this factory was built. And we're really trying to do things the right way. Uh, we're a grain to glass distillery using really clean grains, really clean water source. And uh, we, we hope it shows in the products. And you do everything by yourself, yeah? Yeah, we That's... do everything by hand here. We don't source any products. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, definitely sweet, yeah. Mm hmm. A little fruit on the nose there. Mm hmm. I like the weight weight of this one a little bit. I almost get like almost like a chocolatey uh, flavor profile through the mid palate there. Mm. Yeah. How much rye did you say is in there? It's only five percent. Five percent. But you get a lot of that rye. I feel like on the finish, mm -hmm. you get that bite. That bite that really comes through. Yeah, you rye. get. In the beginning, you you really feel the bourbon. Yeah, it's like like a bourbon, like sweetness, caramel. Yeah, all that corn candy, up maybe a bit of chocolate, a hint of chocolate. I would say. Yeah. But then in the end, you still got some some like that reminds me of rye whiskey a bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree on that. On the finish, I get the rye. Okay. Yeah. Great. So I've I've read something here that you do uh, a journey cask. Yeah. What is that all about? Yeah, it's pretty cool. We call it the Traveling Barrel. Of course, we're playing off that journeyman name. Okay. Um, the idea of, uh, of the travel aspect, of course. So you can come to our distillery. Uh, you can pick out a barrel size that you like. You can pick out any of our whiskeys, from our Silver Cross to our wheat whiskey, our bourbon, our rye. Um, so you choose what's going to go into the barrel. We'll, we'll make the whiskey for you. We'll put it into the barrel. And then when it's mature, we'll give you a ring. Um, depending on the size of barrel you pick, you either get two, four, or six bottles of, of the whiskey out of that actual barrel. And then uh, you get the barrel itself. 
So we have a lot of people that want to com commemorate a special occasion, whether it be an anniversary, um, some newlyweds, mm -hmm. uh, a significant event in their life. They come in either beforehand or, or at the time of, of the event, um, fill the whiskey up. Uh, a year later, let's say it's a wedding, they can come back a year later and, and celebrate by cracking that barrel open. Uh, drinking some of that whiskey and of course they get to take the barrel home with them okay. and a lot of times they have the guests sign the barrel and things like that so uh, it's, it's a fun program um, it works well for us it works well for our guests and and uh, fits with the journeyman theme yeah I, I, I've been here at the at your restaurant and your bar and you do a great job with, with all the cooking as well you have thank you so you much have, um, what's it organic food yeah yeah, yeah we're so trying that, to, that's what trying i really like about i had the what was it the pulled barbecue chicken yeah. sandwich that was great and then now i had the the wedgie sandwich that was also really great so i can yeah. advise everybody who's around here in michigan that come here have a food have a look at the distillery try the whiskey definitely um yeah but really great stuff and yeah Thanks for Thank you having so us much. here. Yeah, it's great having you guys as yeah. our guests, and it's uh, wonderful to spend some time with you. Um, if you ever travel to Germany, then please visit us. I will. <laughs> I, I hope to get there, actually, maybe this fall, so I'll, I'll, I'll take you up on that. Yeah, so thank you for watching, and if you like this video, then please give me a thumbs up, and goodbye.